We are working with functions and relations. More specifically, we are working with domain and range and how to find them. In the last video, we figured out how to find domain and range by looking at graphs. In the first example, we just had ordered pairs. In the second example, we just had a piece of a graph here. And we know that the domain consists of the x values and the range consists of the y values. We also did another example where they just gave us the function and we utilized the graphing utility or graphing calculator to graph it. And we again interpreted domain and x values from this as well as range or y values. But now we want to figure out how can we find the domain specifically when they don't give us a graph, they just give us a function. So we need to go back and we need to review the definition of what a domain is. The domain is considered the first set. So if we were focusing on the graph like we did in the last videos, we were focusing on the x values or the horizontal values on the graph. But in this video, they're not going to give us the graph, so we have to figure out what about the inputs of a function meaning what can we input into this function that actually makes sense, that applies to this. So we need to go back and we need to recall any time you ever tried to calculate something and it came out to be undefined. So um, maybe if you typed it in your calculator, it gave you an error, or maybe in things that we've worked through, you saw that it came out to be undefined. Those are the things that we have to worry about. Those are our cautions when we're trying to find domain, meaning what can we input or what can we substitute in for the x value in our function and it makes sense or and it apply in any situation. Well, the things that we calculated to give us undefined are when we divided by zero, so maybe when we got something over zero, that gave us something that was undefined and we couldn't simplify. When we took a square root of a negative number, now we did learn that we could simplify it to be an imaginary number, but again, that's pretend that's made up. So if we're only looking at this in the real number application, which is what we're doing here, we found that that also is undefined. Those are our two specific cautions that you're going to be worried about in this assignment. But in other assignments, when it talks about domain, you really have to think about in all different situations. So if you're talking about a word problem, you need a domain that actually only makes sense with that word application. For example, if the problem wanted you to calculate distance, your distance can only be a positive value or if it asked you to interpret the time, again, your time can only be a positive value. So time could be zero or greater. So those are the things that you have to worry about in word problems or word applications. And I kind of left it as a blanket statement here, anything else. So anytime you ever try and substitute something in for X or anytime you try and input it and it doesn't make sense, that means it does not figure in with the domain. So let's actually see some examples of this here. I have three examples in this line, and all three of these examples go back to basically our first caution. We know that we absolutely cannot divide by zero. So if the problem gives you a fraction and it asks you to find the domain like our instructions do up here, we know that we cannot divide by zero. So that's the thing that we cannot have, and if we don't see any other problems, like in these examples here, that means we can have everything else. So when we see problems like this, we're trying to pick out first and foremost the things that do not work, because we know that everything else will work. So if we know that our denominator cannot be equivalent to zero, let's go ahead and figure out when the denominator is exactly equal to zero. And if I look here, I do more investigating, I don't see any other cautions. No other square roots. Obviously, it's not a word problem. I don't see anything else I need to be worried about here. So I'm only going to focus on when my denominator is zero. Now, this is a linear equation. 
So I solve it by isolating my variable. I do that by adding 5 to the opposite side. So that gives me 2x is equal to 5. To isolate my x, I divide by 2. So that gives me x is equal to 5 halves. Now, that is when my denominator is, in fact, equivalent to 0. But we know that we want it to be not equal to 0. So if I come back through and make all of these not equal to, that means in my solution I can have any other number here besides when x is equal to 5 halves. Now again, you have to pay attention to how the homework asks you this. If it asks you in set builder notations, note that we can have the set of x's such that pretty much any x works with the exception of x when it's not equal to 5 halves. If you wanted to do interval notation, again, you can have any number besides 5 halves. So that means my smallest number I can think of up to 5 halves, but not including it. Union, we saw that before in the inequalities. Um, and then 5 halves, again, not including it, but everything beyond it up to positive infinity. So if I wanted set builder notation, this would be my answer here. If I wanted interval notation, that would be my answer here. Meaning I can input or I can substitute any x value in for x, and it makes sense or it apply with the exception of 5 halves. I think this would be a perfect time to pause the video and um, see if you can figure out the domain for example 2 and example 3 on your own. Okay, example 2. Again, I see that I have a fraction, so I know that my denominator should not be equivalent to 0. I don't see any other cautions in this problem, no square roots, no word applications, nothing else. So I'm only going to focus on purely where my denominator is equal to zero, or in fact, when it's not equal to zero. This is a degree two equation, so I solve it by factoring, or you can use any of the other degree two methods. X times X gives me X squared, negative three, times a negative 2 multiplies to give me a negative 6, but it also adds to give me a negative 5. If I set each of these equal to 0, or in fact not equal to 0, I know that I cannot have x equal to 3, or I cannot have x equal to 2. So if I want my answer in set builder notation, the set of x is such that x is not equal to 2 or 3. If I want my answer in interval notation, basically I'm going to include every number that we can think of with the exception of these two numbers here. So negative infinity up to 2, not including it. Any number between 2 and 3. And any number beyond 3. So I can include any number on my number line with the exception of 2 or 3. And again, depending on which version the homework asks you for, you have both examples of set builder and interval notation. Example three, same thing. I need to worry about when my denominator is not equal to zero, which I treat or I solve the same exact way as when it's equal to zero. Here I have a degree two, so I can try it by factoring, which it doesn't factor because it's in addition here. So it doesn't fit in with my difference of squares. So let me solve it by isolating my x variable since I only have one of them. I move 4 to the opposite side. So I have x squared is equal to or not equal to negative 4. To eliminate my square, I force in a square root, which technically forces in a positive and negative. So I have x is equal or not equal to. If I simplify the square root of negative 4, that actually gives me 2i. And of course, I have both the positive and negative version of it. But when we're talking about domain, we only want real numbers. So this imaginary number does not apply. It does not make sense. That means I really have any number that can work, that can be inputted into my x value, 
or my domain value here, and it apply, or and it makes sense. There is nothing in this problem that will make my denominator equal to zero. And let's look at it a little bit more closely. So if I take something squared, that's going to give me a positive value. And if I add that to 4, that, of course, it can never be equal to 0. So my domain here I can list as all real numbers, basically any number that we can think of. That would be your answer in set builder notation. Or an interval notation, meaning any number we can think of, negative infinity up to infinity. So we actually didn't have any cautions in example three because my denominator will never be equal to zero. I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, we're going to come back with three more examples of finding the domain given a function like we saw here.